Welcome to lecture 23. In this lecture, we will first talk about a problem called Gambler's Ruin. And then we will introduce the stationary distribution of a Markov chain. And finally, we will talk about the random walk on the graph and the cover time of a graph. Let's start. So here, assume that we have two players, player 1, p1, and then player 2, p2. p1 has L1 dollars initially, and then p2 has L2 dollars initially. And then they are going to play the following game. We are going to flip a fair coin repeatedly. Now if head comes up, player 1 takes $1 from P2. And otherwise, if tail comes up, then player 2 takes $1 from player 1. The two players will play the game until one of them goes bankrupt, which means that one of them does not have any dollar left. So what is going to be the probability that P1 survives in this game? Okay, we can model this game by the following Markov chain, where the states represent the net profit of player 1. So initially, player 1 has net profit of $0. And then, as time goes by, he may win or he may lose. The maximum dollar that he can win is going to be L2, because in that case, player 2 will go bankrupt. And similarly, the minimum dollars that he will be will be minus L1 dollars. It is because in this case, player 1 will go bankrupt. So we will have the states from minus L1, minus L2, up to L2. And the corresponding transition probability between the states is like this. Normally, for a state, there will be half of a chance that it will go forward and half of a chance that it will go backward. But for the ends, for the extreme cases, where player 1 has net profit of L2, then in that case, we will stay at this state forever. And similarly, when player 1 has minus L1 dollars in the net profit, then in that case, he goes bankrupt, and then we will stay in this state forever. And initially, for this chain, we are going to start at state 0. And the problem that we want to analyze is, if we walk on this chain, what is the probability that we can reach this state, rather than we reach this state? Okay, so we let pjt to be the probability that we are going to be at state j after t steps. And we let q to be the probability that p1 survives. Now, as t tends to infinity, what will happen? So if you look at the chain again, as t tends to infinity, we must either be in this state or in this state. Because as we walk long enough, this is one of the traps that when we enter this state, we will never get out. And this is another trap that when we enter this state, we will never get out. But for all the intermediate states, we will walk around. So as t tends to infinity, we will either fall into this trap or into this trap. So in other words, as t tends to infinity, the probability that we are going to be at state j will be zero when we are in the intermediate states. And then q denotes the probability that p1 survives. So in that case, q will be the probability that that we are going to be at state L2. And accordingly, 1 minus Q, the opposite probabilities, will be the case where we are going to be landing at minus L1, this state. So we have this relationship for the case when T tends to infinity. And now, let us look at the game in another way. This time, let us measure the net profit of P1 after T steps. So we use WT to denote this value. So this is actually a random variable. 
Now, we can see that the net profit, if we just focus on one step, each local step, the net profit of P1 for one local step is actually equal to zero because if we are in the intermediate state, we have half of a chance of adding one dollar, half of a chance of minusing one dollar. So the expected net profit for one step is zero. Also for another state, let's take this as an example, half of a chance we add one, half of a chance we minus one. So in that case, the expected net profit will be zero. And even it is also true when we are in the extreme case, because when we are in this trap, then the, the money will stay unchanged. So in that case, after every step, when we are falling into the trap, the net profit will be zero. So the expected value will also be zero. So because of this, by linearity of expectation, the expected net profit after t steps in total will be equal to zero because it is the sum of the, the, the net profit for the first step and the net profit for the second step and the net profit for the third step and so on and so forth up to the net profit for the t step. So we add them up together by linearity of expectation. This will be the expected value of the net profit in the total of t steps. But on the other hand, by definition, the expected value of this net profit after t steps is actually equal to the summation of j for all possible values that we can take as the net profit j multiplied by the corresponding probability that we are going to be at that state j after t steps. So this is actually by definition. So we have computed all such values from the previous slide, and now we have this equation. So combining everything together, we have this result. So zero is the expected value of the, the, the net profit after t steps, and then it is equal to this one, and then this one is equal to minus L1 multiplied by 1 minus Q, plus a lot of zeros, because for that cases, this part is zero, plus L2, multiplied by Q. So we now have an equation with one unknown. This is the unknown Q. So after rearranging the terms, we will get that Q, the chance that player 1 survives, will be equal to L1 divided by the sum of L1 and L2. So if you look at this one, this is actually a, quite a fair game because player 1 has L1 dollars, player 2 has L2 dollars. The chance that player 1 survives is L1 over this sum, and the chance that L2 survives will be L2 over this sum. So the, the probability that they survive is proportional linearly to the initial money that the players have. But this is the case when we are flipping a fair coin. When the coin is not fair, as an exercise, for instance, suppose that the coin is like this. There is only one third of a chance that player one will gain one dollar, but there are two thirds of a chance that player one will lose one dollar. So in such a case, this coin is really unfavorable for player one. And suddenly, the chance for player one winning will drop a lot. In fact, if you have time, yeah, try to solve the case of what is the chance that P1 survives, and then you will find that the chance for P1 survives suddenly becomes a case where it is exponentially related to the initial money that the players have. So, so yeah, please try this as an exercise.